William, have you ever seen so much beauty in your life? Why, thank you, Judy. I feel like I have always been outstanding in my field. We'll show you more beauty next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We are here at Adelman's Peony Gardens. Now you might remember last week we talked to Carol about all the beautiful color out here and it's going to be happening all month long. And you know, this month is just not about peonies. If you take the Brooks exit number 263, you can also go to Shriners Iris Gardens and we'll be there next week. But coming up on the show today, we're gonna be showing you how to make flower crowns. We'll also be showing you how to make planters that hang on a wall. But coming up first, bringing hummingbirds to your garden. You know, one of the funnest birds to watch in your gardens are hummingbirds, and I'm here with Scott at Backyard Bird Shop. And Scott, we're going to be talking today about hummingbirds, uh, going to get rid of some myths maybe, and, and give some information out about them. So what's the first thing that I should be thinking about if I want to start attracting hummingbirds to, me, to okay. my Okay, well, William, there are hummingbirds all over the place, especially this time of year when we have two species of hummingbirds here. Our Rufus, bird, Rufus hummingbird, which is here just during the summertime, and uh -huh. then the Annas, which is here 12 months out of the year. Nice. So um, they're here, and um, they're in your yard. They're looking for food, nectar, and flowers. They're also taking insects. That's a major part of their diet, small flying insects. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we want to do is put out a hummingbird feeder and uh, they will come. They are always looking for food all during the daylight hours. Uh, so they're not that hard to attract and they're quite fun to watch. And I'm assuming that this whole variety of stuff is hummingbird feeders right here. Yeah, we, we have, at Backyard Bird Shop, we have about 75 different wow. hummingbird feeders. <laughs> but we have some favorites that I have, uh, particularly, um, I love these little small saucer type feeders. They're very easy to clean, mm -hmm. uh, very easy to open and get into. And the hummingbirds just love them. They perch on the ring here and uh, take the nectar from them. And then I, I noticed that you have an umbrella here. What would that be for? The umbrella, thank you for asking that question. The umbrella in our uh, wetter than normal climate um, shields the hummingbird feeder from the rain and therefore prevents the nectar from being diluted. Oh, okay. so, so that makes sense. And we have a, a number of these uh, different colors, different styles, but basically the idea is to keep the, the nectar um, at a four to one ratio. Well, and you've got, you know, if you have a lot of them, you could go up in size to get a larger one, but explain this cap to me. I don't understand that. Uh, William, this is a built-in ant moat. So in the summertime, the sugar ants are attracted also to the sure. nectar. And so a hummingbird feeder with a moat on top, an ant moat, you fill this with water and then the hummingbirds, the ants come down the cord and cannot get to the, the nectar actually. So, so, so it really is a, a moat to protect from ants. It's a, a major <laughs> deterrent, yes. And for people who already have um, a hummingbird feeder, you just attach this to the top. Uh, okay. And then that prevents same thing from happening. Well now speaking of feeding, let, let's, you know, we've had, I personally have heard of a lot of, of kind of criticism of feeding hummingbirds like this because they're not getting protein, that's not the nutrition, they'll get used to only feeding off here and then they'll get, you know, sick. Give us some information, help us sort out that. We hear that question a lot too in our stores and um, essentially birds, not just hummingbirds, but birds are programmed not to rely upon one source of food. Yeah. And it's so logical because if they did in nature, if they're feeding on a flower, that flower quits blooming or it qu quits producing seeds. And so therefore they wouldn't have any food sure. if they were reliant on that thing. one flower. Yeah, that makes sense. So typically birds have a feeding territory, hummingbirds as well as all songbirds. And they're moving through that feeding territory all through the day. And that way if one source dries up, they still have others. And it's true with hummingbird feeders. So they really are kind of smarter than us humans in that respect. Because sometimes, you know, we get used to one thing and go over and over. They're not going to do that. This is true. Yeah. Well, now, I, I noticed that this is adorable. Tell us about this. This, um, <laughs> I was a skeptic myself. This is Pop's hummingbird swing. And basically, 
If you've watched hummingbirds, they always, once they identify a food source, they begin to guard that food yeah. source. And so they'll perch in a tree nearby. Well, they are territorial. They are such a tiny little very creature. Territorial. <laughs> They're the terriers of the bird world. Well, you hang pops, um, hummingbird swing near your hummingbird feeder, and this gives the little guy a place to perch and guard his food source. And even though you were you were doubtful, it actually worked. It actually worked. Well, certainly, if you have any other questions about not only hummingbirds and regular other types of birds, but attracting wildlife to your gardens, you can go to any of the locations at Backyard Bird Shops and talk to their excellent staff. And to find those locations, you go to gardentime.tv. Scott, thank you so much, my friend. Thank Always you, Always a pleasure. For this week's tip, we're talking about spraying safely in the garden. On the day you're going to spray, make sure there is no wind because you don't want any spray drift. Also, when you're spraying, you want to walk backwards. You want to be able to apply it and walk out of the spray you are applying. You don't want to have any of that application on your pants or on your shoes to bring to another part of the garden. And speaking of pants, you do want to wear long pants and long sleeves to keep any of that possible spray from getting directly onto your skin. And why not also wear some safety goggles, keep it out of your eyes, any kind of protection for breathing, and of course, always wear gloves. You know, that's the tip of the week, being safe in the garden while spraying. Spring is here. And May is the time to bring spectacular colors and fragrance to your garden. Farmers and Gardens can help you succeed in any corner of your garden. From hanging baskets, container gardens, veggie starts, water features, or something truly unique from our gift shop. Farmington Gardens brings May colors to life. Open every day, just a short drive out Farmington Road. Farmington Gardens, we're growing for you. Hi, I'm Burl Mossel with Rare Plant Research. We're a nursery and garden. You're invited to join us the one week in the year that we're open to the public. You can tour our gardens and get inspiration for your own garden. We have 10 greenhouses full of rare and exotic plants. Enjoy lunch from a local caterer while tasting wine at the greenhouses. We will be sampling our wines from Villa Catalana Cellars in the Garden Conservatory Tasting Room. For directions and information, visit us at rareplantresearch.com. Join us and get inspired. For over 100 years, Collier Arborcare and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terracasa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terracasa. Terracasa in downtown Damascus. We all love to have our imagination sparked and we love to have projects in the summer. So we're gonna do both. I'm with Amy Biggie at Al's. How you doing? Good, Judy. You know, we have your girls here today and we're in Fairyland. So tell us a little bit about what fairy gardens are. Oh, fairy gardens are so much fun, Judy. It really is a miniature garden for either indoors or outdoors that sparks the imagination. Oh. And it's just a magical spot that can uh, draw fairies in if you believe in that, or gnomes, and bring good luck to your garden. Ooh, I love that, good luck. And so <laughs> I see that you have this little pro um, pot here. So it's really a container, but it's more than a container. It is, yeah. This particular garden is an indoor fairy garden in a container, beautiful pot. 
And as you can see, the girls are adding all kinds of different accents to the little garden that we have here, this little beach scene. Oh, that's so cute. Um, but there's so many options. There are outdoor gardens as well that you could even just choose a spot in your landscape to Perfect. build a little fairy garden and add it in. So really you can use any kind of plants just so that they're all the plants that go together so that we can take care of them the same. That's right, yes, yeah. If you have shade plants in there, you should stick with shade plants or if it's more for a sun area, then right. you wanna go towards that. Oh, nice. And I see that the, in this area, you really can cater to any kind of theme. And so even yeah. for little boys, big boys, girls, um, there's some kind of a, a um, accessory for that. Yeah, yeah, there's a draw for everybody. I feel like, Judy, there are the farm, um, accessories that are really fun, maybe for boys or, or, or girls, and uh, fairies or dinosaurs. There are lots of options yeah. that you can do. And you know, I think it goes a little bit beyond gardening. Being outside is that you could even draw pictures, you could write stories, or around the dinner table or the grill that night, you can kind of say, you know, this is what happened in my fairy garden today. Right, yeah, what I've found, Judy, is it really sparks their imagination, and they do. They make up stories, and uh, they look for the fairies, so it's really a whole <laughs> fun adventure, the whole project. That is great. And you know, I think too that it's fun for families to do because we all want to be outside in the summer while the weather is so nice. And so really right. with um, all kind of generations, you could have this fun. Right. Oh yeah. We have a great time, all of us together doing it. So to use, to do this for our gardens or for our home, what kind of supplies do we need? Uh, it's pretty simple actually, Judy. Uh, you want to start with a bag of potting soil. Just regular soil is great. Uh, will work well for this. And then uh, you add some of the plants and the accessories. You want to make sure when you're caring for your fairy garden that you keep it watered, just like you would any container. And then fertilizing on and off throughout the summer will help too. Oh, sure. So really, it's a container just with all these extras on it. Right. <laughs> yeah, you care for it just the same as a regular container. So it makes it easy, plus it's really kind of creative and imaginative. Right, yeah. Amy, thanks so much, and thanks to the girls. And so if you have any other questions, please go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you to the L site and have lots of fun. Thanks so much, and thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>
And you're here to, to tell us how it can really be quite simple. It is. It is quite simple. Um, if you're coming from a, a hose, there's two ways of doing it. You can either come from a hose faucet um, or you can come off a standard sprinkler system, underground sprinkler system. And so you can do both things, but let's, let's do the, the one on the house, the faucet. Okay. How do you even start? So the first thing you would need is a pressure reducer and a filter. And you can get those in an all-in-one. And this would just go right onto your hose faucet. Um, the pressure reducer keeps things from blowing apart. The, the filter keeps things from getting clogged up. So from there, you're going to go to a half-inch tubing. Now, let me ask you a question real quick. On this, though, to me, when I hear filter, it means about, what, once a month you have to replace it? Once Never. a year? Really? Okay. Don't even open it up and look at it. It's, <laughs> it, it, it it'll act as most, you know, if you had uh, maybe a well that had sediment or something, we might, you know, do something a little different. But this is would be for your home That's just water right supply. Out from city water, right. Okay. We're just, okay. It's kind of an insurance policy to make sure that n n no little you know sediment comes through okay. or something so um, once you've got that on then you can use a fitting um, these are called power lock fittings and they're super easy to use you're just gonna push it on okay. and then back this nut over and you're on oh wow that is simple yeah and you can undo <laughs> it so it's not you know you can work it off this one I've done a couple times so it's a little bit worn, you know rounded out but it's still they're easy enough to come off. Okay. Um, you'll run your half inch tubing around your yard. Um, it's best to go like along a fence line or along the foundation of your house sure. or something like that and then come straight out from there to your plants. You put in clamps. They also have 90s, couplers, T's. This is the end clamp. Very very high tech. So when you, <laughs> yeah, it is, just, isn't it? Just so bend then it I over. would think you just put one side on Slide and then it. fold it around. Yep. And put the, okay. Very easy to that do. Is simple. So super easy. Um, from there, you decide what you want to what you want to water. So most of the people are going to water shrubs or what have you. Sure. You can do hanging baskets, um, patio pots, vegetable garden rows, hedges. Well, that you uh, know, which everything. begs the question to me. It, you have all of these little parts that have colors on them, which I'm going to assume have something to do with water dispenses, how mm -hmm. much you get from each thing. How do you even know that? I mean, how do you come up with what needs what? It, it's, it's pretty simple. The emitter basically is, is determining how much water gets past it okay. in an hour. Okay. So everything is gallons per hour. Okay. And I recommend you usually run the system a half an hour a day. So um, the emitters uh, come in everything from half gallon an hour up to 24 gallons an hour. And that is hour. by color. And that is okay. by color. But that, you know, sometimes it's a little intimidating. But generally what you do is you use the half, one, and two gallon most. Okay. The half gallon would be for hanging baskets and patio pots, small things like that, maybe tufts of grass that are really don't want much water. Okay. The one gallon an hour would be for small shrubs like um, azaleas or heather or something smaller. And then the two gallon would be for larger shrubs like camellias or rhodias. And how or do I like know that. that that shrub would want two gallons or that pot would want a gallon? How do I figure that out? Well, if you're not sure, then um, what I recommend is just take a two gallon watering can, fill it up, go out there and put on it what you think it should have in one day. So I recommend 30 minutes a day. So put on it what you think you're going to get in one day. Uh -huh. Um, then you see, oh, I put on half of the bucket, you know, so that's one gallon an hour. So in order to get one gallon on it a day, of course, we're going to double that because we're only running at a half, half an hour. hour. See, that, that is simple. It is. <laughs> it is. A half an hour makes your math easy. You know, you just say, you just double whatever the size is of the gallons you want on it. Everything it can be taken apart and put back together again. I it's like It's like that. a Tinker Toy set. You just, if you aren't happy with the gallon you put on it, just change it to something else. But let's say something occurs, a plant dies, or you add another one, or you redo a thing. You've already poked some holes in this, so Not, then what yeah. do you do? Not a problem. Um, this is, a, this is a, a plug, and so you just pull that out, push a plug in. And it looks just yeah. like this, and looks then just you like just that. plug it in there. Okay, so just then push it, in. it really is you can constantly change this whole system as your yard changes. Sure. And you poke the holes in with a tool here, excuse me. That's fancy. And they're, they're easy to use. Oh, that is easy. It's done. You could take a coupler, just stick it in, stick it in the back. This just holds it a little so your hands don't get hurt, you know, when you're pushing. And you pop it you're in. You're in, and then you start putting your tubing on, and you're off and running. It's super easy to do. So now, what if I want to run 
some of the hose along my fence or maybe on my patio for the hanging baskets? Sure. There's clamps with nails that you Easy. can use on the half inch, on the quarter inch. Nice. Um, you can, after running it up along your patio or something, you can paint it. Nice. So you don't you even know? really see it. Then. You don't even see it, yeah. And what about those places in your yard that might need a little bit more, like a regular pop-up sprinkler type thing? They're sprayers so really? that you can use, um, there's a variety of different things you can do for sprayers. There's nice. pop-up type things. Um, these pop up, these regular sprinkler and they all heads, work but they're off all this. still quarter inch tubing. And they all work off this same system, right? Yes, they nice. all work off the quarter inch um, and the half inch tubing. You, these you just put together, you know, um, you, you, you put them together yourself, so you decide what kind of topper you want on them to do a half circle, quarter circle, full circle. And Cindy, what about those things like in the fall we're supposed to cut down watering on tomatoes so they ripen up better? What about shut off valves. Sure, there's there's shut off valves in both sizes. So if you want to um, do the shut off your vegetable garden because sure. you've already harvested or cut back on the water for your tomatoes, you know, you or you know, anything you want to just isolate. And then what about vacations? I mean, if you just took this right up to your faucet at home, what do you do? That's the best part. Just put a, uh, a hose in timer on it, wow. you know, okay. hose bib timer. Sure. Um, and you never have and to go out in your yard again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I have to tell you that this, it really was intimidating to me when I first started thinking about this kind of system for watering. Well, you can go to gardentime.tv and, and click over to their website and see wonderful things like this, or better yet, come out and talk to Cindy and the staff and really get all the information you need to use your water wisely in your garden with a drip system. Thank you so much, Cindy. Sure, thank you. Welcome to Drake's, not your ordinary garden center. Grab a cup of coffee at Antonio's and wander the nursery for the perfect plant. Check out the landscape design showrooms for ideas, then meet with a designer. Come pick out a bouquet of flowers for dinner or for that someone special. Find something distinctive for your home or your garden. Imagine the possibilities and let Drake's turn them into realities. Drake's 70s on Southwest Shoals Ferry Road in Portland. Standard TV and Appliance is the place to buy luxury appliances and more. I agree. At Standard, I got the best selection, best price, and the best service. Standard carries top brands like Wolf, Sub-Zero, Decor, Gen Air, GE, and KitchenAid with great deals on washers, dryers, ranges, and more. Shopping at Standard is a slam dunk. Setting the standard since 1947. Standard TV and Appliance. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Create this year's containers and baskets with black gold natural and organic potting soil. Don't trust your edibles and flowers with a potting soil labeled organic. Look for the OMRI listed logo on black gold natural and organic potting soil to be sure it truly is organic. Look for earthworm enriched black gold at your local garden center or go online to blackgold.bz. Black gold, all the riches of the earth. I'm at Sugawa Nursery in Woodland, Washington with Brian, and Brian, you know, I love coming here because you have a specialty in pond plants and pond maintenance, pond care, and so yeah. it's so great to come and see all of these kind of plants. Yeah, it's hard to believe it's that time already, you know, <laughs> it just seems like it was February, but anyway, uh, yes, pond plants is that time to start the start getting ready for the garden, you know, the water gardening. Um, kind of breaks down to like three kind of basic plants, you know, we have the floaters or the ones that are on top. Okay, which, what is this? That's the water lettuce All there. Right. Pretty much is going to be a, like an ant, tropical plant annual. We so don't pretty. really try to winter them over because they just don't look very well. It's actually like an annual, like, you know, marigolds or geraniums oh, or anything okay. else. Just start new. And uh, there really is, hasn't, that I've found, a secret on wintering them over very well where they look attractive anyway. So, so, so come get them fresh. Yeah, I think they're $2 a piece or something like that. So 
uh, kind of an inexpensive uh, item to put in. And what do they do for the pond? Well, basically, what that's going to do is you have some roots. You know, they're not really aerial roots, but they just they're going to be take they're denitrifying all the excess that the the fish are giving off, oh, or the you know, okay. it, so they kind of cleaning up or filtrating, and then they also would shade the water from the sun heating up without it being anything covered up on top. The, it, it doesn't allow the sun to kind of heat up the water. Fish usually like it as cool as possible during the summer. Oh, perfect. And then what about, um, say, like the marsh marigolds? What would that one do? Well, this would be kind of what we would put on your shelf, what we call a shelf, right on the, the margins of the, the plants or the pond. And basically, once again, these are probably going to be containerized. And uh, easy, yeah, it is pretty much. You, you know, you're just pretty much going to be that shelf right at one foot at the water. You just put set it around. It kind of helps um, camouflage the edges, you know, where you have the, the liner or the, the fabricated pool or whatever it is. It just kind of helps soften that. Make and it, it decorates, more sure. Yeah. And then there's the submer submerged ones like the water lilies, which right. is right here. Yep, that's right. Those ones you would probably go down about 15, 18 inches or whatever, wow. bog plants. Um, Again, they're going to have, you know, mostly talking about water lilies or the ones that are a little deeper than 12 inches off that shelf. So their uh, leaves would probably be going to the top and as you can see down oh, here. Okay. So these would be up on the top shading down. And again, the, the roots would take out, you know, they do their job on, you know, shading the water and then filtrating out the excess. And what's interesting is, you know, they're just like the ground, the um, perennials that are being in your garden, there's time to be dividing right. them. Yep. So how would you divide this one? It's kind of an old yeah, one. It, you know, you could, what would you, like a glad or I don't know, you can see that iris rising. Or, yep, exactly, iris. Right. So you're looking for like two to three eyes, divide that up, you know, so you're so going to have little cut. chunks like that mm -hmm. and easily uh, you'll have more to come up just by division. Make sure you have a couple eyes, cut that off, put that in the soil. And, and you would you use um, these little baskets. Well, yeah, they're what you would want to use. I mean, you can use nursery containers, but uh, it's kind of hard to keep the soil wet. So as you can see, you got the netting or a net pot. Mm -hmm. Water comes through all sides and the bottom. It makes it a little easier. And you use special soil. It is aquatic planting mix. Um, a lot of it's or just medium. like mm -hmm. yeah, it's a lot of it's just like. Um, it's a non-soil, it's a right, soil, it's really a soil yeah, right. right. So it, it would uh, saturate and help go down to the bottom. And then I see that you have some fertilizer. So really for your plants that are um, the ones that you're not dividing, you want to fertilize yeah, them too. Yeah, these would be like just little tabs mm -hmm. and you kind of put them in the soil, but they're, they're going to be long lasting. So they don't really, I mean, it's going to be kind of an organic base. So you don't really have to worry about chemicals getting into the sure. water for your fish or plants, but uh, it would last a lot longer than a normal. Uh, other slow release. So really, just like your regular garden, there's things to do for your pond gardens yep. too this time of year. That's right. You got to get the list ready on the, <laughs> the water gardening too. So if you have any other questions, come out to talk to Brian and his staff, and really get your pond going so you can enjoy it all summer long. Thanks so much for all the information. Thanks, Jamie. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, four generations of garden know-how, fun and fantastic garden decor, and the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. The health and beauty of your garden starts from the ground up, and healthy soils begin at Grimm's Fuel. For the best in garden mulch, blended soils, and bark dust, choose Grimm's. U-Haul delivered or installed, Grimm's can do it. And if you're looking for a new lawn, Grimm's can do that too with our special lawn installation service. Grimm's is also the area's largest recycler of yard debris. The foundation for a healthy garden begins at Grimm's Fuel. Your center for home and garden decor, Garden Gallery Ironworks has everything you need to make your home a showcase. For the inside, we have a great selection of Kelly Ray Roberts items, and our farmhouse style department is full of one-of-a-kind gifts. For the outside, we have arbors, trellises, planting beds, and garden decor. Everything to make your neighbors jealous. Check out our new website and then come visit us in Hubbard. Garden Gallery Ironworks. 
The irises are blooming. The Shriners Iris Display Gardens are now open and free to the public. Surround yourself with a rainbow of color of over 500 irises. Or take a stroll in our 10-acre display garden. Smell the fragrance as you see iris paired with other beautiful blooming plants. Check out our cut flower display and pick up something for that iris lover in our gift shop. Take home a cut flower bouquet or order some for your own garden. We are easy to find. Take the Brooks exit off I-5 and follow the signs. Over the 30 years that our family has been in the nursery industry, we've learned that anyone can supply a customer with plants and garden supplies. But it's supplying those plants and supplies backed by a knowledgeable staff that can transform a garden and take it from ordinary to extraordinary. That's what we do at Sagawa Nursery. Why be ordinary when you can be extraordinary? Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. So I'm here with Kim Foran and we are at Geranium Lake Flowers and today we are going to be talking about a different type of crown, aren't we? So tell me what we're doing here. As opposed to a diamond crown? Yes, possibly, or gold. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are making flower crowns and flower head wreaths and they are very fashion forward and very popular. Um, we're making a lot of crowns in lieu of, say, lays for graduation, you know, uh, different wedding clever. kind so of... So you could wear that to a prom then? A prom, yeah, yeah a prom. Anything. <laughs> yeah, you could wear it um, walking down the aisle. <laughs> you could wear it for your baby christening, <laughs> for your quinceanera. What else? I think you can pretty much just wear it around the house. And honey. this this is the one you're going to have me wear now. <laughs> well, this one is more of a Greek god look, and that. this is Hebe, um, uh, bay leaf, and then rosemary. So this is for remembrance, and right? And so, it, well, what? <laughs> yes, of course it is. So what do you, how, is there a way that you choose these? How do you make them? Just, yeah, just... Um, I'll show you how to do it. First, I'm going to put mine on. I made this one uh, just before you got here. And this is a little full, right? But this okay. is kind of the style these days. They're very cool. I know, they're really cool. So let's make one. So I have a, a couple different kinds of, um, you need a ribbon or some sort of, uh, something to put the actual flower material on. This next one we're going to do like a little crown like yours to uh -huh. sit on your head. Um, or and is there, what's in it that makes it rigid? Is it a wire? Uh, yeah, this is a like a sisal covered wire. Okay. We also use this satin covered wire That's which fancy. is a little bit more flexible. Um, so you want to grab your, uh, your piece of wire and um, for this one we're going to make a kind of a loop crown and I measured your head earlier, right? Yeah. And so this is going to fit right on your head. And it just sets right there. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to put our flower material around. So you want to grab some clippers and you want to kind of select what you want. Okay. Um, do you want to make this for Sure. Me? Okay. I'll try so anything three or four times. You are going to make little short bundles about okay. three to four inches long. So go ahead and clip. Do you want some bay leaf in yours? And why not? Okay. And um, I also got some lavender because look how pretty that That's is. That's beautiful. And when you're making you these, do you, do you think of like, is it the same as with other floral design that you do here? Do you think about the color and the texture or it, is, it that, is it different when you're making these? Uh, yeah, I mean, you think about what kind of vibe you want, what yeah. kind of color you want, um, if it's gonna match your wedding dress, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> I, I, it, must, it has to match my wedding dress, Kim. Yeah. There's nothing else to it there. Um, so <laughs> then we use this corsage tape, and this is a, a wax-covered paper tape, and it stretches. Mm -hmm. So the trick is for this is to really um, pull it tight. And you notice that I kind of cleaned the yes. end of the stems. And you kind of make a little bundle. So you bundle your plant material like this. You take a piece of the tape and you really stretch it and you make kind of a little bundle. Oh, so you're, you're pulling that pretty tight. Right? Yeah, so then you make your next bundle. 
I failed you. I didn't cut that one short enough. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. And this is, we're going to go for a big fat bloom. This is a Lysianthus. This is a bicolor pink and white. Beautiful. Um, I like to pick things that are going to hold. Yeah. Um, because Cause these aren't going to have water, are they? Right. Yeah. No water. And um, they're short term. They'll last for kind of the length of an event, yeah. you know, kind of four to eight hours. Um, so you make these little bundles like this. You kind of clip off the end so you can kind of see we have these three bundles and we can kind of see okay. what it's going to look like. And usually me, I kind of line it up to see kind of what my So it's my really vibe. almost like making a Christmas wreath or a different kind of exactly. wreath. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Well, that makes it much easier to understand then well, for my simple mind. <laughs> so you're going to go ahead and okay. put this together. You're going to trust me again. Yeah. Okay. And so you pull it tight. Yeah. And then just, I'm trying to copy you and I'm not doing it clear. It's definitely kind of a small finger move. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then you, you just love roll it. it. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then you can just pull that off. And then we're going to take the clippers and kind of clip the end. Okay. Maybe. Um, and now we're ready to add our plant material to our hoop. Okay. Okay. So again, um, we're going to grab some tape. And the same type of tape, right? Yep. And then am I doing the tape yeah. the wrapping thing again? Yeah. Okay. And this is a little bit trickier because you have to go in the hoop, but you can do it. I, I thank you. Your faith will help me uh, conquer this, I'm sure. Okay, I see. Now you just, well, I'm not going to make this for a living, am I? Because I'm <laughs> not very fast at it. And then you just, put, oh, okay. What if you actually wad the tape up like I just did? <laughs> so you want to make sure the tape is all flat. Okay. So if it gets kind of folded, um, you can either start over. Yeah, you're good. And then do you do you add now? Yeah. More. So then we're going to break this off. You have a nice secure. It's not uh, wrinkled or anything. So then you're going to take your next bundle and you're going to lay it about three quarters down. So if you go too close, it's then it's jumbled. Blob. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so then usually you can kind of see about right there. Okay. Got it? So then, and then you just do I'll the same start thing this again. for Thank you. you. So Thank you. So stretch it. <laughs> so Kim, now we took a couple of minutes and you added to this because clearly you're faster than I am. But I was Check wondering. Check out the peony. Look at that. Yeah, stunning. Yeah, and you see how I added the maple yeah. to pick up on the color? Yeah. That's another cool thing. It looks so rich right there. It really does. Yeah. So if we, if I come in and buy one of these, should I treat it like regular cut flowers and maybe keep it like chilled until the event that I'm going to Yeah, um, what I would like you to do is I would like you to mist it. So oh, okay. mist it with water and then put it in a bag so it's enclosed. So we use a little box, but you can put it in a Ziploc bag oh, okay. and put it in the refrigerator and it will last um, a long time, actually. Here, and wait, I think I need to trade you out. Do you <laughs> I, w I went from, from a, a and uh, the Greek style thing. is also these big blooms. Here, look at the camera. Yeah. Honey. So big, huge peony, um, kind of asymmetrical. Nice. And nice. Uh, I don't know, that looks awesome. And it, so it works for you. It works. Okay. <laughs> so you know, if you're thinking to yourself, well, these are adorable. I would look. love to. Get, <laughs> I would love to make some of these for my own. Whether you're having a party or an event and you're thinking, I'm ah, just not sure how to do it, they have all the supplies here. So you can come down to Geranium Lake Flowers, pick up the supplies, and I bet you could even ask some questions if you needed to on how to create them for yourselves, or they already have some made, so you can just buy them and don't have to worry about it at all. Kim, thank you so much. It's always delightful. You look so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you're welcome. Look at your home. Winter left behind grungy stained decks, walks, siding and lawn furniture. You know they look awful. Clean them all today with the original and still the best 30 Seconds Outdoor Cleaner. Since 1977, 30 Seconds has delivered clean when you want it clean. Easy to use, spray it on, wait, then hose away winter dirt, grime and stains from algae and mold. From our family to yours, thank you for buying 30 Seconds Outdoor Cleaner. Find it at leading home stores and garden centers. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain.
Dram for Lawn and Garden, available at garden centers near you. Little Baja is your source for a whole lot of terracotta and concrete too. From bird baths and benches to Buddhas, bears and fountains, plus the exclusive Baja chimney, we have an amazing variety of the finest in terracotta and concrete containers. Come check out our selection of statuary for any garden theme or setting. So for something for the garden, deck, or patio, come see us at Little Baja on East Burnside in Portland. Find us on Facebook too. Subaru Garden Days are here again. Join us at Capital Subaru in Salem for a day filled with fun plants and garden art. There will be free seeds, plants, and hot dogs. You could win a $100 gift card from Al's Garden Center or a $50 gift card from Drake 7Ds. See you at Subaru Garden Days. Locally grown, fresh from the farm, stylish and sustainable, your dream yard starts at Al's Garden Center. Create an inviting gathering place for family and friends with a new patio furniture collection. Our beautiful furniture transforms any outdoor or space, large or small. It's like having an extra room outdoors. Then fire up the grill. We have lots to choose from in a variety of sizes and styles. Sunny days are calling. Get your new grill now. Owl's Garden Centers in Woodburn, Sherwood, and Gresham. <laughs> what are you looking for? Judy, I'm looking for the Garden Time Subaru. William, it's right behind us. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find it too. It's as easy as going to Gardentime.tv. So click on Gardentime.tv and click on the Subaru. Each month the Subaru will be in a different location. Give us your best guess and you could possibly win. Each month, one lucky person will be chosen from all the correct answers. Prizes can include a gift card to a great nursery, some wonderful tools, or other sweet prizes. So go to Gardentime.tv and help us find the Subaru. It is such a real delight for me to be here with Megan Big John and, and tell me where we're at, Megan. We're actually at Campbell Native Garden, which is in Lake Oswego, right across from the Hunt Club and near Iron Mountain Park. And what I like about this is most of us, I think, when we think of public gardens, we think of these grand spaces. This is really quite small. How big is it? It's really small. It's about a half of an acre. And how did it how did it come about? How did it get here? Well, it's a pretty neat location. Um, we're right along a stream corridor and it was uh, planted in dedication to uh, the Campbell family. Who, Which were really, uh, they did a lot of good stuff for Lake Oswego. They did. They did. Um, they were definitely very involved in the community and development. And so this was a way, great way to honor them. And it is an all native garden, right? It is, yes it is. And why, why was that choice made? Um, that was what the family had requested and would like to have, um, and it also fits in with the setting that surrounds the area. So tell me a little bit of, about, because you, you work for the city of Lake Oswego, I right? I do, for Parks and And so Rec. you're kind of responsible for getting this into place, and there was a time when it had kind of gone out of, of beauty, wasn't there? It definitely did. It very much so got overgrown and we've been very fortunate to be able to have the help with the rotary of, nice. this, of Lake Oswego to come in and help us. And so we uh, spent the last couple years getting a lot of the native plants cut back because they were very overgrown, trying to handle the weeds and we just had our first planting to celebrate Arbor Week. And the wonderful thing about this is because a lot of times I think natives get confusing to a lot mm -hmm. of people and they think if they just put them in their in their yard, they'll never have to do anything again. <laughs> but, but you guys, you really do a lot of work to maintain this. There is. With any landscape, you've got open beds and you've got plants that you're going to have to hope, hopefully not prune back. But some of the natives, they like to spread and like to flourish. And so there is going to be some maintenance with them. And you do have a sprinkler system here because just because it's native doesn't mean it might not need some supplemental water. That's exactly <laughs> right. Depends on your soil. If we're in an urban forest or just in a forest in general, you're going to have a lot more organic material than you right. are in a finished landscape and so you are going to, depending on what your soil is, you may still have to supplement irrigation throughout the summertime, especially with our warm summers now. And you also, you, you mentioned earlier to me that we were, you had a plan for a future thing that's happening yeah. across the street. What is we're that? We're pretty excited. We're going through a master plan process for Iron Mountain Park right now, which we're really hoping once that gets developed and in the works, which is quite a few years down the road, that we'll be able to draw more people in here to see how to use uh, natives in their landscape. And it's also, you, you've got benches, you've got places to yeah. set here too. Now if people had questions about what they needed, how could they find stuff out? What did you use? When you well were we have great resources here in Lake Oswego. Backyard Habitat is one mm -hmm. of those organizations that can provide help to homeowners and that we're actually in the process of getting certified this garden itself currently. Oh, so nice. yeah we're really excited to have that accredited.
accreditation. Well, you know, natives are a wonderful thing. They're, they're clearly something that we can all use in our garden. For more information on that, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click over to their website and you can gather up some natives for your own garden. Megan, it's always a joy. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Leah. Well, I have some fun things to show you today. I'm with Becky Sell from Seedem Chicks. Good morning. Hi, Judy. You always have the most innovative planters and with sedums and hens and chicks and, you know, it's the big trend that's been in gardening. Definitely. But why do you think that they're so popular? Um, I think the biggest reason why they're so popular is because they're low maintenance. Mm. It's something in the heat of the summer, it's 90 degrees all week long. You still only have to water it once or twice a week. Um, when you do water it, give it a big drink, let it dry out between waterings, and go from there. Ah, that is good. And it's easy to assemble. I mean, you can really use any kind of containers. You have the Hyper Tufa, which you always were famous Definitely. for, but now you're doing some other things. And you have these picture frames that make beautiful artwork. So yes. are you gonna show us how to do that? Yeah, um, we're gonna plant this living wall hanging today. Um, we call it vertical gardening. Um, when we, uh, we make all these on our own, um, we make them out of um, cedar, um, so it's nice, long-lasting wood. And you can see we put the drain holes Perfect. through the middle because good drainage is the most important thing for succulents. Um, so what I do is I line it with my moss. Okay. Um, just and that's to, just sphagnum moss? Yeah, just green moss. Um, and I make it so it kind of is a nice little cushion on the sides just all right. for fun. Get these already? Yeah, definitely. Um, this is uh, the Delisperma nubigium, um, and it has the yellow blooms. Um, unfortunately, it just got done with its blooming season. Um, but I'm going to put that guy toward the bottom here, okay. um, and then he's going to kind of creep over oh, the edges. Okay. This one does a lot of fun color changes throughout the year, right. um, where the whole thing um, in the stressful months, like the winter months and the really hot summer months, the whole thing will turn like a reddish coral color. Oh, pretty. Yeah, it's definitely really awesome. And then this guy called Coral Reef, I'm going to also put him toward the bottom too. And I'm just trimming off this extras, um, and then I'll tuck them right here, nice and tight because when I plant them, I like to be able to hang them up right away. Oh, so we don't have to wait. We don't have to leave them on a table no, and let them kind of grow in. Not as long as you uh, plant it really, really tight. And so I'm going to tuck that moss next door. Okay. Um, and then next we have this, oops, oops nice, sorry. it's all right, this nice big red hen. Um, I chose this guy kind of um, for an accent type of plant. Yeah, look at that pretty red. Yeah, sure. poke them in here. And so you're not hurting the roots at all by taking some of that excess not at soil? All. Not at all. The root bases are really, really shallow. All right. Um, so and more moss. More moss. Just tuck it in. Next, we got this beautiful Cyboli. Um, this is an arcing type of foliage. Um, and it grows to about uh, 12 inches. Um, I think the foliage is really beautiful for all the different succulents. They all have such awesome textures and colors throughout the year, so it makes it really fun to watch all year long. And some of them even bloom. I mean, they don't even have to bloom because they're such a cool texture and Definitely. color, but when they do have blooms, it's an added bonus. Definitely. Very neat. Yep. So we're tucking that guy next door and then we'll finish up with the dragon's blood, which is always a fun favorite. Um, this, all of them want to be pinched and trimmed throughout the season, um, meaning, you know, just pinch just off the off. heads okay. and then the, it will bush out from there. Um, if you don't pinch it, it will just give energy to one or two of its arms. Mm -hmm. um, so like this guy, you could see, I just pinched them, right. um, I think last week. I went and trimmed them all, and you can see there's new starts already starting on there. Oh, perfect. Um, yeah, so it doesn't take long in the nice, in the nice uh, warm months for them to do that. And then when you choose the plants that go into one of your um, frames, what are you looking for? Um, really, they all work well together. These are all hardy for outside. Um, in our climate all year, as long as they have the good drainage. Um, so I, what I'm doing is just looking for colors and textures that look good together to me. So really it's whatever your eye um, is interested in. So just be creative and just kind of go crazy and pick Definitely. them all out. Definitely. Well, I know when we see you at Farmer's Market or at, um, let's see, you're at the Beaverton Market, really you have a wonderful assortment for us. Definitely. Yeah, and this year we're also going to be at the 
um, Milwaukee Sunday Market, and that's new for us this year. We just decided to try something new. Look at that, and it's finished. I mean, that definitely. was just two minutes. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, it's pretty in there pretty secure. I'd give it a nice drink um, after I got done planting it, and I'd feel comfortable hanging it up right away. Yeah, and I see all of the beautiful ones yes. behind us. And really, you have these sedum tiles, too. Look at this combination here, and really, you can just plop that in, yeah. and you were done. Definitely. Yep. And so, or just, else you can cut it apart like you did some of these window boxes. Yes. Yep. Besides Milwaukee Farmer's Market on Sunday, where else can we find you? Um, we have product in um, New Seasons, um, digs inside and out on Alberta, um, little Baja and a couple other places around town. So you can visit Becky, go to her website and you can see where she's at or um, you can just make it yourself and get all the pieces and parts from her. Definitely. Well, thanks so much for making it easy Thank for you. us. Thank you. Yeah. I'm at Garden Fever with Lori, and Lori, you have this great story to tell us about some of your damaged plants. Well, it's squirrel nesting season. Oh, no. And <laughs> this is a sad story about the missing maple. <laughs> uh, one of our great staff members here, Josh, was standing right here by the gardenias, and he looked over and he thought, I thought there was a tree here, <laughs> a lush tree with lots of stems. And as you can see, this squirrel has taken wow. all the tips off. And then uh, the next day we came in and pretty soon the dogwoods started disappearing. And so we're hoping, he, you know, that nesting season is going to be over soon. But we do carry a couple products that you could try. Okay. Um, some are more lovely than others as far <laughs> as fragrance goes. They're called Shake Away and they're for whatever kind of pest you're trying to get rid of. They have one for deer, they have one for cats. Perfect. This one's for rodents and it actually has something that's not too bad smelling, mint oil, rosemary oil, cedar oil. Uh, now this, this one's a little stronger, one, yeah. uh, which we may need for the squirrel. This <laughs> one has fox urine and I would imagine that would deter just about everybody in the nursery. So I'm a little <laughs> hesitant about using this one here, but you could use it at home. Right, right. Yeah, so it's always good to kind of come in and say what the pest is and, and what you're trying to get rid of and maybe there's a little shake away thing you can use. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, if this is happening in your garden and you don't know what exactly to do, there's all kinds of pests, big pests and little pests. Come on out to Garden Fever and talk to Lori and her staff and maybe you can stem that before you lose your whole tree, just like they did. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for this sure. education. My pleasure, almost. <laughs> Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah with Portland Nursery, and I'd like to invite you to check out our website where you'll find valuable gardening information that you know is local to our area. Check out our gardening solutions page where you'll find over a hundred helpful brochures or sign up for our email newsletter to receive timely gardening advice, inventory updates, and upcoming classes and events. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. On 50th and Stark, 90th and Division. Do you want to garden more of the year? Then look no further than the Greenhouse Catalog. Our spacious Solex greenhouses provide plenty of room to start hundreds of plants. Get a jump on your spring garden and continue harvesting long after the first frost. Extend your growing season and enjoy mouth-watering tomatoes and fresh vegetables with Solex. Come see us in Salem for factory direct discounts. Find out more at GreenhouseCatalog.com. Color, color, color. When you think of your garden, think of color. Then think of Margie's Farm and Garden. High quality plants and great customer service are our trademark. Get more color for your dollar. This weekend, we have full flats of zinnias for $24. Great for any garden. Vegetables or herbs, hanging baskets or perennials, trust Margie's Farm and Garden, just off I-5 near Aurora. Subaru Garden Days are here again. Join us at Capital Subaru in Salem for a day filled with fun, plants, and garden art. There will be free seeds, plants, and hot dogs. You could win a $100 gift card from Al's Garden Center or a $50 gift card from Drake 7 ds See you at Subaru Garden Days. Peonies, bold and beautiful. An old favorite, but ever new and perfect for your garden. At Adelman Peonies, you'll find hundreds of different peonies, bush, ito, and tree peonies covering 20 acres. 
Come stroll the display garden, then find a special plant or bouquet to take home. Join us any day of the week for beautiful color or weekends for special events. Adelman Peonies is just east of I-5 at exit 263 on Brook Lake Road or online at peonyparadise.com. So I'm standing here with Justin and we are at Terra Casa and Justin, today we're going to be talking about fountains. It seems that there are so many pre-made fountains available, but you guys do a great job of using actual pottery as fountains. Is yes, that a difficult thing to do? No, it's not too hard at all, actually. It's, it's pretty simple. You know, we just use this PVC pipe here. Um, we fit it with this. Uh, that way you can pump the water up through the middle of it. Uh, fit it with a couple fittings on the bottom and silicone it to the bottom. That way it's nice and, nice and watertight and nice. sealed up. And then, uh, and yeah, what, turn it into a fountain, basically. What would this be for? This valve here, so this is a control valve here. Most of the pumps have a control valve on them, but it's really hard to get to when it's inside the reservoir. Sure. So you just want to use this just to adjust the flow a little bit in case it's too high, too much flash for you, so you can turn it down just a little bit. Now, you said inside the reservoir. Tell me what that means. What is it, a piece of the fountain? So, so yeah, so the, no, the pot, the, the pump itself is inside the reservoir. So it, what it does is it pumps the water up through a hose into the bottom of this. Okay. And up through the PVC pipe and fills in this pot and spills over the outside. So it would seem to me then, Justin, that if you have a, a thing like a reservoir, mm -hmm. you could really put that in the ground on a patio. What are some of the options? That you so, have? so some of the options here. So if you if you have a patio or a deck or something like that, generally what we'll do is we'll we'll set you up with a self-contained fountain. So what we'll do is we'll give you a fountain that all the water stays inside, and you just see the bubble on top, but you oh, don't so get the water. Oh, so there is no reservoir. Yeah, just so there's all no within, reservoir okay. at all. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Um, now, if you have a place in a yard you want to bury, that's when we give you the reservoir here. Nice. Um, we come out, and you know we can come out, and we can install these reservoirs for you. We can get this fountain all set up if you so need that. So you guys will do the installation? Yeah, we'll, we'll oh, nice. do the installation as well, nice. yes. Um, you know, and uh, if you did want this elevated on some sort of a patio or a deck or something like that, we could do that as well. There's round stones that we can put around it to hide the reservoir. So you can just disguise it. Exactly, then. exactly. And then if people don't want to, they just want to come in and, and learn, you can certainly talk them through right here on how to do that. Exactly, exactly. If they want to do the installation themselves, there's a lot of do-it-yourselfers out there, so they want to come in, they want to get all the stuff and do it themselves, and it's not too difficult to do, so I can talk them through that. And I really love, too, that I saw some new beautiful stone that, that are also fountains as well. They've been drilled for that, right? Yeah, yeah, and we, we do those as well. We do some stones. We do, um, along with the pottery, we have some uh, rocks that we turn into uh, water fountains. We can come out and install those as well. And there's such a selection of pottery. I mean, all the colors, the sizes, you, you really offer about everything. Yeah, basically. So you don't always have to have, you know, the pots you see on display here. We can turn any of these pots into fountains. So from the smallest one we have to the biggest one nice. we have. So you guys also, though, have just traditional pre-made fountains. Yeah, yeah. We have a couple of different kinds. We have some one-tier, some two-tier fountains that are pre-made. Uh, that are made out of stone that come to us, and we can we can deliver those for you, get those all set up, um, and those don't require a reservoir at all. Wonderful. So they're nice and freestanding, and uh, just require a water source and a power relatively close. So you know, there's that. That's it. If you love your home and your garden, you come out to Terra Casa because you can find wonderful things for both the home and garden. Talk to Justin about the fountains and how to put them up, or you can even have them come out and install them. Justin, thank you so much, my hey, friend. Thank Delightful. you. Thanks for watching Garden Time today, and a really big thank you to Adelman's Peony Gardens for letting us come out here and spend some time. Now remember that is exit 263 off of I-5 where you can visit this wonderful display garden, or you can go right across the highway back there to Shriner's Iris Garden and visit them as well. And you know, when you come here, don't forget to go to the display garden, out to the field to see the peonies, and you can take one home for your garden. So for more information on today's show, we always invite you to go to gardentime.tv. William and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.